This fence is the only thing separating a 10-year-old victim and the man sentenced for sexually soliciting her. Here's where my daughter was playing with the cat. Carrie Dane Marlowe was at this fence when he tried to kiss Chris Smith's daughter and asked to lick and rub lotion on her. He also exposed himself to her. She ran into my room where I was taking a nap and I woke up to my daughter half in and half out of my closet trying to hide, crying hysterically, saying, Daddy, I'm so scared. Marlowe pled guilty to criminal solicitation of a minor this summer. While he is not allowed within 30 feet of the victim, as part of his probation, he can return to his home next door. It's simply an intolerable situation. It's not something that any family should ever have to go through. We went to Marlowe's house today to get his side. That and our phone calls went unanswered. Smith says while his daughter doesn't go outside alone, contact is not only unavoidable, it's inevitable. But how is it that this is OK? There is no law that restricts him from living next door to his victim. Candace Lively prosecuted this case. She says while state laws restrict sex offenders from doing things like buying homes near school or being at a public park, nothing is on the books that says they can't return to a home they already live in. It's very difficult for me as a prosecutor to even swallow the idea that I have to look at a victim's family and say, you know, I can't make a move. So what options do we have? Senator Luke Rankin's been researching this and so far he's found no existing laws in any state that restricts a sex offender from returning home, even if the victim lives next door. As to if anything proposed in South Carolina would make it to law. There will be a protection of both the victim who we are most concerned about and her family, as well as the, the uh, criminal's constitutional rights. Again, they can't be ignored, and that's the balance that we'll have to strike here.